first thing on the list is actually when you shut your door and it doesn't close all the way, hold on, like this, and then you go to lock it, it doesn't actually lock your door. You see that? You still open it. So on the Ford, when your truck was running and you clicked lock while it was started, it would actually lock the door if it wasn't closed on the way, all the way. Now, this is only while it's running. I actually just checked. It does, when the truck is off, it does lock the door. But this is, for example, let's say you just filled up on diesel and then you pull forward and you're jumping out of the truck to go inside the truck, it's inside the truck stop to grab a drink or food or whatever. And then you accidentally don't close your door all the way. This, like in this situation, I noticed it. It's frustrating. And so that's the first thing, definitely. Hey, how's it going? My name is Alex, and in this video, we're taking a look at this 2021 Ram 3500 that I just picked up from Enterprise, and I traded my Ford in to get, actually. Now, you can see on the sticker in your door when you open it up, the date of manufacturing, and so here in this situation, it was 4 of 2021. So I'll be going over some of the things that I like and some of the things that I hate compared to the Ford since I literally just traded into Enterprise. And that actually brings me to my first point is, guys, Enterprise specs the trucks this way i realize some of the things that i may complain about they're uh, on higher trims and whatnot but keep in mind let's say enterprise is negotiating with ford and with ram and they're like hey we want a truck for fifty thousand dollars here's the truck that they offer to enterprise at about fifty thousand I, I don't know what the price point for enterprise is but let's just assume it's like fifty thousand dollars so here's the truck that basically ford and ram comparatively can provide to enterprise for about 50 grand another thing i don't like on the outside is the fuel door it's definitely too small the trucker nozzles don't fit very well and that's probably because of the double flap system too and so in general i think this is too small of an area probably worthwhile to redesign uh, but i'm sure ram doesn't want to spend a ton of money fixing this little issue so um I, I but yeah on the ford you have that nice big fuel door which is definitely much better than uh than this so uh definitely one point another point to the to the ford in this case the next thing would be these mirrors guys the ford mirrors literally when you go side by side and like i've driven that ford i when i turned it in it had fifty six thousand miles and so uh when, when you go like the same day from the ford to the ram you definitely notice how small and ridiculous these mirrors are they definitely have to upgrade this is this is just unacceptable especially when you're towing you can't see anything back there so mirrors that's another point to the ford a point to the ram though for sure is at this price point the ram does come with the push button right which on the ford it still has a key so at whatever the price point the enterprise negotiated ford says the best they can do is with an actual physical key and so that's why i give my drivers rams because then i can only then i have to only give them one key and so this way they can leave the truck running when they go into the truck stop uh they don't have to like actually shut it down and the reason i want to have a second key is just in case the driver loses the key you know i can mail it overnight it's something like that but I, I haven't actually had that issue but still when i was driving the ford i had to carry two keys with me the two keys that that they give me from enterprise so it's like really ford like come on you can't put a push button you know what i mean it's like that's ridiculous it's 2021 you know uh so yeah that's a point for the ram now speaking of technology the ram just absolutely drops the ball with this screen right here it's like hold on like i said literally we're complaining about the ford it's 2021 really what is this puny little screen like three inches really guys you're including this and look at the backup camera on this like terrible. <laughs> like what is that you know so at that price point the ford definitely wins on the screen now i i realize ram has the big old 12 inch big screen i i get it guys but i'm just saying let's say you're at a you're shopping for like a work truck right it's like with the i'm comparing essentially the two work truck editions that enterprise negotiates i think i've said that already three times in the video but just keep in mind so on the work truck edition this ram screen is absolutely a joke the backup camera is way too tiny and a, a third thing is there's no sirius xm on here which i didn't even know that but there was on the Ford. And so it's like when you buy a new truck, you get six months, or when you buy a new vehicle, I should say, you get like six months of Sirius XM included. N nope, nothing to listen to, you know? I'm really missing the Sirius XM. So that's two more points to the Ford. Since we're giving points to the Ford, let's continue with the 12 volt. Look, there's only one 12 volt right here in the Ram. 
just one. There's no other 12 volt in the entire truck. None, literally, this is the only 12 volt. You got four USBs and USB Cs down here. Oh, you can't even see, but down here, there's a USB in the center console. Uh, and I think that's it. Uh, yeah, so literally one 12 volt. So I have to run this like adapter thing so I could actually charge my laptop and stuff. Speaking of charging for laptops, the Ford at that price point, at the enterprise price point, get, has a like actual house plug for my laptop whereas the ram doesn't so i mean you could say the charging situation that's another point for the ford and since i'm sitting inside the cab let's talk about the cab guys i really want the ram to be redesigned with a bigger cab like they do on the 1500s i think that cab has way more space and so really if you're trying to get a truck right now don't get this style cab because this cab is just much smaller i have these bins um that i put right here just to make it easy to swap trucks just all my stuff in there and it's like the, the bins on the Ford fit really easy. On the Ram, I actually ended up broke. A, I broke a bin because it didn't fit and I tried to squeeze it in between the seats. So cab uh, for the Ford, definitely a win. That's another point for the Ford. All right, let's keep going. Transmission, you can see there's that yellow dipstick right there. Uh, it's on the passenger side. So that means 68 RFE. And that is an absolute pile of trash transmission. I don't know why Fiat still puts it in this truck. It's absolutely ridiculous. Um, definitely, if you're gonna buy a Ram, do not get the 60 RFE. And for the people that are getting ready to comment, oh, Alex, you know, the 60 RFE is actually not a bad transmission. Oh, really? Then why do they have to detune the Cummins if it's not a bad transmission? Exactly, it's a bad transmission. Uh, so save yourself a headache. I actually had an owner operated with like 90,000 miles, his 68 RFE, um, something went wrong with it, put him in limp mode. Um, so definitely the six speed versus the 10 speed comparison, the Ram loses another four point for the Ford. Uh, moving on though to the engine, uh, you know uh, Cummins, that's obviously the good, the good one. That's a real diesel, you could say, not that none of that V formation stuff. Uh, so I will say the engine, uh, the, I mean, if you get the icing transmission, the drivetrain for sure is a like four or 500,000 mile drivetrain. You cannot say that about the Ford. As good as that 10 speed is, guys, literally I've had now multiple Fords at like 60, 70,000 miles, transmission problems, you know, shifting hard, not good. Like, and, and that could be because, uh, you know, we, it, it's probably due for a service on the transmission fluid, but regardless, just keep in mind that 10 speed on the Ford, it's finicky. Um, it is really good, but it doesn't last very long like um, an Ison with the Cummins would, even though this is not an Ison. And that right there is probably how I could summarize a Ford versus Ram comparison. It's like, if you want a truck that has a reliable drivetrain, you know, the Cummins with the Ison is pretty darn good. It really is. However, if you want a truck with all the bells and whistles that doesn't have a good drivetrain, doesn't last very long, then you could look into the Ford, you know, because as we counted up in this video, it's like, there's a ton of points that the Ford got at this trim level that the Ram didn't, you know? And so really that's your option. Good drivetrain, get a Ram with an Ison or maybe a Ford with a six speed. Or if you want good bells and whistles and all the good options, get a Ford, but your drivetrain is gonna suck. So to summarize this review of the 2021 Ram is, I'm glad it's an enterprise rental <laughs> because you know I get to switch it out every so often and when the new trucks come in, I'll be able to get those too. So I really do like the enterprise program, even though there's a big wait list and I recommend it to you guys and you you know, you know can't get it for Hot Shot. Let me know what you think about this review slash comparison 2021 Ram versus 2021 Ford and I will see you in the next one. Bye.